now in the game we have a player box that will move around. Okay, so it's time to do some inputs. So we will right click, add a new group, and this group will be called player inputs. Select the group, hit B for a new blank sub event inside of the group. Double click. We will go to, oh, you know what we haven't done yet? We have not added the keyboard component. So go back to game, double click anywhere, and we will add in keyboard insert. Good. Now we have access to the keyboard inputs. So double click again back on game, keyboard, and we are going to check to see if a key is down. So the key we'll be checking first is W. And if W is down, we want to set on the player box. So we will go to add action, player box, scroll on down to set boolean, double click, and we will set the boolean for up to true. So now we're saying if W is down on the keyboard, the player setting up will be true. But we want to have, if we're not pressing W, to have that be false. So we will select this whole condition here, hit X for an else statement, go ahead and select the player box for our action here, hold down control and drag it down and that will copy it. Now we can double click and set this to false. So this means that if W is down, it sets up to true. If it's not down, it will set it to false. Now we want to do this for both W and for the up arrow. So what we'll do is there are two ways to select your conditions here. If you select on the very outside, you see how it highlights the entirety of this whole block right here. If you select just over here where it says keyboard, that is selecting just this condition on its own. So we're going to select just this condition, hit command C, command V. So now we have two instances. We will double click on the second and just change the key input to up on the arrow keys. But we still have a problem. Now it's saying if W and up are true, then it'll set up to true. We don't want that. We want either or. So what we'll do is just make sure you have this condition selected anywhere and hit Y on your keyboard, which will turn it into an OR block. So now that we have it saying if either of those are pressed down, we will set that to true. So we want that to happen for all four directions. So what we're going to do is copy both of these sections, Command C, Command V, and we're going to change a couple of things. So we will double click here, change this to D, double click here, change this to right arrow, and we will just change these to right and right. I tend to work this way a lot where I will cut the, if I need to use the same pieces, just copy them and change the pieces. So, so we're going to do two more times, double click, change that to A, double click, change that to left arrow, and we will change both of these to left and left. And last but not least, we have S, down arrow, we will set this to down and down. Now the one thing we want to do is none of this should be happening if we're in the middle of attacking. So what we want to check now is we will go ahead and add a new event, select player box, scroll all the way down to is boolean instant set, double click and check attack. So we want to see if the player is not attacking. So we need to inverse this. So we have player box is attacking currently. And you know what? Let me zoom this in. So hopefully this is a little easier to see. My apologies if that was small. We want them to be inverted. So we will go player box is not attacking. And to do this, I hit I on the keyboard. So if you hit I, that will inverse the option of the Boolean. So if the player is not attacking, let's drag this up to the top here, select all of these and drag them in. You see how there's this little black line here that shows you where they're going to go. If you move over a little bit, you can see how it's now nested itself underneath the player box is attacking, and we want that to happen. So now, none of this will happen if attacking is set to true. But we want to have, if the player is attacking, we want to set all of these to false. So what we'll do is select the entire section here. We can actually collapse it to make this easier to see. Select, if player box is not attacking, then we will hit X on the keyboard for an else. So if they are attacking, now we want to make all of those other conditions false. So we'll go ahead and drop this down and we can just go select up false, hold control and select each one of the falses, hold control down again 
and drag all that down. So now if we do attack, everything will be set to false and the player won't move during the attack, which is what we want. Okay, so we got all that going, but the player still isn't going to move with any of this. This is just reading the inputs and setting a couple of booleans. So we can collapse player inputs, right click, add a new group, and this new group we will call player movement. Select it, hit B for a new blank sub event, and we're going to need to do a couple of checks here. So first thing we're going to do, double click, go to player box, and we want to scroll all the way down here to the tile movement section, and we are going to check to see if the player is moving. And again, we want to do this on the inverse. So if the player is not moving and we want to see if it's not attacking, hit C on your keyboard. This is the shortcut to add a new condition. You can also right click and add another condition. Go to player box, scroll down to Boolean set, and we're going to do the same thing we did last time with attack. So if attack is true, we don't want it that way. We want to have it inverse. So we want to see if attack is false. So we will hit I. If neither of these are true, we can have other actions happen. Hit B for a new blank sub event. And now we're gonna be checking the Booleans we set up here. So double click, player box, is Boolean instance variable set, double click. And let's go ahead and just start with right, why not? So if right is true, we wanna have the player move. Add action, player box, simulate control, right. So that's all we have to do to actually make the player move right. As long as right is true and it's not attacking and not moving, then it'll move to the right. While we're here, we might as well make this a little bit easier for ourselves later. We will add one more action, player art. Come on down to set value. We will set the value of dir to right. Make sure you put the quotes on there, they are needed. And also make sure that it is spelled the same as you have it in the actual art here. So this is where we're referencing the direction that comes after the animation type. So now if right is not true, we want to check one of the other directions. So let's go ahead and hit X for an else. So if right is not true, if right is true, it does this else we want to check for left. So again, we can select, there are two ways to select, select just the condition, hold down control, drag it down and we will double click and change this to left. So if left is true, we want to do the same thing, but with going left. So pretty much a lot of copy and pasting here for the different directions. So we can grab both of these conditions, hold down control, drag them down, and we will change this to left and change direction to left. Again, make sure it is spelled the same as you have it. And now since we have an else already here, we can select this whole section, copy paste, and this kind of goes down like a waterfall. So if right is not true, it'll check for left. If left is not true, it'll check for the next direction. This just kind of gives us a hierarchy here. We will double click, set up, set this to up and change this to up. And last but not least, we have down. So set that to down, down, and down. Hopefully that is all clear. If it's not, go ahead, pause the video right now, and you can just make sure make sure yours looks the same as this. And now let's set a couple of animation things. So if we're not moving in any particular direction, if none of these are actually true, let's go ahead and hit X for one last else statement. So if none of these are true, all we're going to do is add an action, player art, scroll on down to set value. We will set value to anim, and we will set this value to idle. Make sure you have the quotes. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward there. The last thing we need to do is set up the other standard animations. We can select the whole group here, hit B for a new blank sub event that is not a child of this section. We will double click. We will check player box and see if it's moving. So if player box is moving, all we want to do is go add action, player art, set value of anim, and we will set it to run. Everything should be all set up to have us move around. The last thing we need to do right now is if we open the game, this will move. Uh, let's go ahead and select it. Make sure we deselect default controls because there will be a bit of conflict with having the default controls trying to read keyboard input as well as our player input. If we hit play right now, we can go ahead and see our boxes there. If I use the arrow keys, I can move around. If I use W, A, S, and D, I can also move around. And that's exactly how we want that to work. But we have no player animation right now. 
So let's add our player animation to the actual layout. Again, I like to keep them on the object layout mostly because if I'm setting up a level, I don't want to have to move this and the player art and put everything all together. So all we have to do here is actually say, we're at an event, system, and we'll do on start of layout. On start of layout, we will add an action, player box, and we will spawn another object. So go ahead and start typing spawn, and it should pop up right here. Spawn another object. So this means on the start of layout, the player box will spawn our player art. Let's go ahead and make sure it spawns it on the player layer. If you just do an open quote here, you can see all the layers you have and go ahead and select the one you want. We will have it spawn at image point zero, which is the top left, done. And then we wanna make sure that we pin the actual art to our player box. So we will go to player art, double click, scroll down to pin, pin to object, pin to player box, position only, and click okay. So now if we actually look at our game, it spawns in with our player and we can move around. But we don't have the player's animation actually happening. We're setting the instance variables that tell it how to work. We're not set, telling it to actually set up though. So what we're gonna do is close this, go back to game, and add an event, system, and this time we will do every tick. So this will actually fire off every frame that the game is running. Every tick, we will add an action in player art, and we will set its animation, and we will set it to, we can go ahead and delete those quotes, we will set it to self dot anim, which will be idle run attack space ampersand. And the ampersand is bringing multiple strings together here. So we have the instance variable, which would be idle run. And then we need to have an underscore because of the way we labeled our animations. So you do a quote, underscore, quote, don't put any spaces inside of the quote. This will stitch everything together. Space there, we can do ampersand again, and we will do self.dir. And this will give us the direction. So now if we go ahead and save, go to game and hit play, we can see our player is there. If we walk to the right, we can see we're walking to the right. If we go to the left, we're going to the left, up and down. So that's exactly how we wanted that to work. So now our animations are all linked up. Um, we have nothing firing off attacks yet. We will handle that next time. But thank you for watching and see you then.